I'm creating a, three videos to try and help my classmates who haven't used Excel very much. Um, first video is going to be a very basic video. I'm going to go over the cursor, getting around Excel, putting some basic formulas in, uh, inserting rows, copying versus cut, how to print, and how to use more than one sheet. The second video is going to try and get you a little bit more proficient, uh, show you how to set some formulas up so that you can just drag and drop them or copy and paste them. Uh, using named range, uh, ranges, which a lot of people haven't even seen, didn't know existed. Checking your formulas, uh, using lookups, rounding, uh, those kind of things. And then the third video is going to be a way to get away from using the mouse and get you a lot quicker. So a lot of people are pretty for, for proficient with Excel, um, but they, they want to do things a little quicker. Um, and there are a lot of shortcuts that can really help with that. I am not good at doing these kind of presentations, so you'll just have to put up with my uh, monotone voice and my uh, tendency to stammer a little bit when I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to say, because this is all really ad hoc. So with that said, uh, here we go. I'm going to start with a basic income statement. This would be as if you started with a blank page and you just type stuff in. Um, I'm, there's no formatting in this, there's no, no there aren't any formulas, um, and I'm just going to go and basically fill this out, show you how to do that, uh, and how to do some basics in Excel uh, for the first video. So the first thing we're going to do is just talk about the cursor. Um, if you pay attention, you'll notice that the cursor changes. The cursor right now is a sort of big plus sign. If I hover at different places, I get a down arrow or a double-headed arrow that allows me to sort of split, uh, resize things. And it's important to note there's also a little box down here and when you hover over that box you get a little plus sign. So pay attention to the cursor because it'll kind of give you some hints. The second easiest trick in Excel is if you don't know how to do something just right click. Use the right click mouse and it'll give you a set of options. And usually Microsoft uh, has what you want pretty close to here. I uh, started using Excel quite a long time ago, so we didn't have a lot of these functions, which is why I started using shortcuts, and even these toolbars will change. So this is uh, Excel 2010. If you have an older version or even a newer version, uh, you're going to see things slightly differently. Basically the idea hasn't changed in 15, 20 years, however long Excel has been out. So uh, you should be able to use whatever version of Excel. I've not used the online version of Excel yet. so. Uh, I can't comment on that. So the first thing we're going to do is um, talk about rows and columns. So in Excel, everything is set up with rows, or sort of columns or rows. This would be column B. This would be row four. And as you can see, when I'm in this, I get a name box that tells me where I am. If we want to refer to this um, this cell, all we have to do is hit the equal sign on the keyboard and then we can type B4 and Excel nicely color codes things for you and it shows you what you're looking at when you hit enter it basically reproduces what was in that cell if you want to clear it out just hit the delete button and it will clear everything out of your cell next thing we might want to do is format these things so our, our year um, indicators we might want to center them and underline them so up here in your um, toolbar under the home um, tab there's center and then over here is underline. When you first use font formatting you get this little spinny disk for a while because Excel is going to load all these into some sort of background um, system. Once you do it again it's a lot quicker. There are keyboard shortcuts if you go into the help you can find out what those are. They're pretty much generic for all of the Microsoft products like control U for underline Control C for copy. Uh, next thing is maybe number formatting. So we want to put some commas in here. Um, up here we have different kinds of formatting and styles. If we hit the comma button it's going to put a comma in there with the decimal and then this is going to allow you to increase and decrease the decimals. There's another um, sets of, there are other sets of form, formats that you can just pull down if you'd like out of here as well. Now that we've formatted that, what we probably want to do is copy that format to other places and they have something called a format painter. 
and it looks like a little yellow paintbrush. If you click on that once, it will copy the formatting, and when you click on any other cell, it will transfer that. Now, we probably want to click on a whole lot of areas, so what we want to do is double click. Now, if you double click on the format painter, it's going to stay in that format. All right. And if you want to format a large area, you can just drag over the whole area. The way you get rid of that is either hit escape or you can hit the format painter button again and it will stop pasting the formats and it'll just allow you to move around. So let's put in a basic formula and uh, fill this out. So we've got the revenue, cost of goods sold, and we want to get a gross profit here. So what we do is we hit the equal sign. We can either use the arrow keys up and down, which I like to use, or you can uh, use the mouse. And then it's just arithmetically uh, revenue minus cogs. So I'm going to hit the minus and click on the cogs. Once again, you can see that the uh, formula is color-coded and all we have to do is now hit enter and we have a formula. That formula, if you want to modify it, if you click on your cell, the formula will appear here in the formula bar. You can double click and that will bring you in for editing. And the way I prefer to do it is to hit F2. And uh, F2 is just something you'll have to memorize. But as you can see, once again, we have uh, color coded formulas. So if you wanted to say, okay, I messed, made a mistake and I actually wanted this um, to be C6. You can get your uh, cursor over the edge and it'll give you this four-headed arrow um, cursor. You can drag that around. And now the formula is this minus this. All right, let's say you wanted to undo that. Um, there is an undo in the formula somewhere. I have no idea where it is because I always use control Z and that will undo the last change you did. Once again this is a generic thing in, in uh, Microsoft products. Control Z is undo. Uh, it's probably somewhere up in here to do undo. I'm not sure. Oh, there it is. Right there. Undo. It's the same thing as control Z. A lot of the buttons if you hover over them as you can see here will actually include the shortcut. Okay, so now we've got a formula in here and it's basically um, B6 minus B7 and I want to copy that formula over. A couple ways to do that. You can get your little plus sign over the bottom uh, right corner where that little black box is. You can just drag that over and you can see it goes gray and that's going to show you where you're going to drag this formula. Uh, so I'm just going to drag it over and let go and it's now giving me this formula. Another way to do this, copy it. You can use control C or copy. You can then highlight the area. Several ways to do that. And then just hit enter. And now what it's done is it's going to copy and paste. Unfortunately I've got a couple of bogus numbers in here so it doesn't look like the formulas are working. Uh, all right, so now we have a formula in here, and we've copied our formula over, and we've got this nasty-looking number sign thing. This happens when your columns are too narrow, and what you're going to have to do is widen your columns. There are a couple ways to widen your columns. If you go between the columns, you'll get this double-headed uh, cursor, double arrow. If, if you hover right over a column, you get this down arrow. If you get right between it, you get a double-headed arrow. This will allow you to, if you click the left mouse button, you can drag the width. Or you can double click. And what it will do is it will widen the column to the longest um, value in a cell. So let's say I wanted to reformat this column A. I can just come in here and it'll if, when I double click, it will shrink that cell down to fit the longest values. So that would probably be income statement. Another way you can do this is if you right click on it you can do column width and you can just manually type in so I'll just say this is 18 wide. I don't know what the point point system or how many points there are pixels um, so I don't usually bother with that. Now we also probably want to um, potentially insert a row or a column and I want to separate this income statement from this growth. One way to do that is just to highlight the row. You just click over here, right click 
and then hit insert. So that's the easiest way to do it. Just select the whole row and then right click and then hit insert. If you want to insert a column, let's say we wanted to put a column between year and 2012, we could click on B, right click, insert, and now we've got another column. So um, those are some of the sort of basics. If you want to copy your formulas, we can now highlight an area. I'll try not to use the keyboard shortcuts. We can highlight an area, right click, copy, and we can come down here and right click, paste. You'll notice there's several paste options. There's paste values, paste formulas. Um, what you may want to do is just use this one, which is just a generic paste. The expenses are not going to be the same calculation as gross profit, so what I'm going to do is now put in a formula that says sum these expenses. So the way to do that is equal sum, open parentheses. When you do a formula uh, or you use a function in Excel, you usually put that um, the name of the function and then an open parentheses. You'll select some rows or columns or cells and then close parentheses. So in order to sum the cells immediately above this. I'm just going to highlight and then close parentheses. Another way you can do this formula is you can click up here and it will actually walk you through how to do this formula. So let's do that over here. So I can do insert a function and then I can do I want to look for what that function might be so I'll say sum and it'll search through all my types of formulas. I'll come into sum and then I'll, it'll try and anticipate what you want. I can now click on this and say I want to sum these values and hit enter. And now we have used their little tool to, to, to write it. If you, um, you'll see the formula is pretty much the same. Doesn't matter how you write it. And once again, we can use Control C to copy and Control V to paste. So now we have our expenses. Um, our EBIT is actually not a formula. So what we might want to do is, is calculate what that is. And we can just type our formulas in this way by going our gross profit minus our expenses plus income minus interest expense and we can copy our formula over oh, sorry shortcut All right. if I did the formulas wrong I'm doing this ad hoc and you'll just have to uh, make fun of me later okay now what we want to do is, is calculate taxes um, and we're going to use a little formula for that and what we can do is we can say, well, it's going to be the EBIT times a percentage. So we're going to say equals this times 34 times 0.34. And that gives us our taxes. When you write a formula and you actually plug numbers in here, it can usually lead to some problems. So I'm going to suggest rather than doing it this way, we're going to do it a little smarter way. And what we're going to do is we're going to put the tax rate right up here. So I'm going to insert... tax rate and I'm going to say it's uh, 0.34 and then when we write our formula I can once again double click and instead of putting 3.4 I'm going to say it's two cells so now we have 34 percent of 840 gives us this number once again I don't like that formatting so I'm going to use my format painter and then our net income is going to be this minus this. All right. So let's copy our formula over and see what happens. Zero. Okay. The reason why this happens is because our formulas are not pegged. And in the, the next uh, video, I'm going to show you how you can actually peg your formulas to a fixed area and whatnot. But just for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to do this. Okay, so I have a fixed area here, and I have a formula that just refers to 
uh, the value. Often very difficult to tell what areas are uh, plugged numbers and what n areas are calculated. So you might want to differentiate this with a formula. So I'm going to indicate that this number here is actually an input area and I'm going to change the formatting on it. So I want to come up here and I want to format the um, I want to make it a percent formatting right here and I want to add a decimal and then I'm going to come over here to cell styles and a lot of people don't know this is here but this is very useful and you can say I want to make this an input so now I've actually visually indicated that if I want to change the tax rate to 35 percent I can just type it in the little input box and it'll change my formulas below all right, so this is sort of an, an easy way to remember where you have inputs and where you have uh, formulas. Once again, if I want to copy this formula over, I can use a little box on the side here. And now I have a basic income statement. The other um, thing we might want to do is we might want to um, center things over an area so we can have like titles. And I'm going to insert a row in here and I'm going to type in MBA help with Excel and now I want to center these across this area so that I can um, have it look a little neater quick and easy way to do this is to use merge if you want to get really quick with Excel there are other ways to do this but this is the sort of basic quick way to do it and um, oops you gotta, you gotta do it one at a time so I just merged that across the center, it looks a little neater, and I want to do the same thing uh, with the income statement so I can use my format painter, copy it over. And now we have a basic uh, income statement with a tax rate that we can manually adjust, formulas at the bottom. Not that obvious where um, subtotals and totals are, so what I'm going to suggest you do is you're going to use the bold for your calculations make them stand out a little bit and if you even want to use some border shading to indicate that those are subtotals you can come up here to this little border icon and you can do the top and bottom and then at the very bottom you can do a different kind of border shading with a heavy thick bottom at the bottom and you've basically got the the tools to create simple spreadsheets in Excel